Hey guys, and welcome to On The Table. It's been a busy couple of weeks in the world of tabletop gaming, and this is your place to get news about your hobby. Direct to your living room every two weeks. But if that's not enough and you want some more, remember you can also follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page, and of course visit the Beast of War website, where we'll give you a daily dose of your favorite hobby in the form of video reviews and discussions. Remember you can also join us every other week for our live show, Turn 8. If you want more details on that, then head on over to beastofwar.com where you can send us requests for discussions and ideas for games that you would like to see covered. Now that that's over, let's get on with the show. As always happens in the world of wargaming, there's been some controversy over the recent release of the Plastic Forge Fathers from Mantic Games with some of the discussion being centered around the use of loincloths and capes from their fantasy range in the new sci-fi models. However, never once to rest on their laurels, Mantic have answered their critics with this set of additional sculpts for their Forge Fathers range. The announcement of this upgrade kit follows hot on the heels of the release of the Warpath starter set, The Fate of the Forge Star. The starter set has both Forge Fathers and the new Marauders, each with a cool vehicle or ordnance piece to really put the hurt on your opponent. Aside from all of that, Mantic have also released photographs of the new wreckage markers that you can use to demonstrate your ordnance or cool vehicle getting blown to pieces. High Tech Miniatures do a mean line in futuristic armor clad champions, each with their own particular themes such as angels, vikings and even crusading knights. This latest miniature, Ark Father Gabriel, falls quite firmly into the angel camp and judging by his chalice and sword, he's one archangel who's out for blood. Other miniatures in the range have a similar style and many come with their own scenic base, saving you time and effort hunting down a base that's just epic enough to match the mighty miniature you're about to mount on it. These models often serve as proxies for various heroes in other sci-fi battle games but they truly shine when painted up as a showpiece in their own right. If a more gritty flavor of science fiction is your thing, then these trench coat clad gang members from Heresy Miniatures can easily represent a criminal gang from the urban sprawl of a near future metropolis, or a group of enhanced corporation agents ready for battle against the forces of law and order. So if you're looking for a line gunman or a mob of fighters to turn your tabletop into a Blade Runner style nightmare, then why not check out Heresy and see what they have to offer. I didn't think orcs went to school, but it turns out that they do have a school bus. Puppets War have created a spectacular orc battle bus. Armor plated and lined with gun ports, you might be forgiven for thinking this vehicle has more in common with a battleship than a humble motor vehicle. Either way, the guys at Puppets War do some great work with resin conversion packs, as well as some really individual vehicles and models that might just fulfill your need for a cool centerpiece for your army or a painting challenge to test out your brush skills. Those fine folks over at Bane Legions have been extremely busy this month managing to produce four fantastic resin cast models to complement their ever-growing range of impressive miniatures. First, we have the monstrous hell demon who for some reason has been dubbed Krull Servile Lord of This. If this guy is servile, imagine what his boss looks like. Next up, we have Maru Swordtooth a saber-toothed tiger of impressive proportions. If you're looking for a prehistoric opponent for an RPG or a cool companion for your favorite warrior of the wild, then this model should impress both you and your friends. Following that, we have Karak, Tain of Tarvax, although an immensely big minotaur with a huge ax might be more appropriate. And finally, there's Eric Longax, who frankly looks a little small, but is perfectly formed when ranked up against the other previous three monsters. So if you live on a cave on Mars with your fingers in your ears, then you probably don't know that Games Workshop have just released the updated version of their Necron Codex. Necrons are the Warhammer 40,000 equivalent of Terminators, with a serious fetish for everything Egyptian. Anyway, just like Arnie, they're back, with a set of bigger, better, and even more Egyptian themed vehicles and units. Beasts of War of course have been running a week of 
coverage dedicated to the steel-plated Pharaohs of 40K. If you fancy diving into some of the extensive Necron action, then you can check out the reviews, unboxings of new models, general chit-chat and fun over at our website. Or if you just can't wait, then this QR code will transport you directly to the full Necron extravaganza, just like one of those monolith portals. Ah, but that's not all. Beasts of War, in conjunction with MiniWarGaming.com, are also offering a prize of a $500 Necron spending spree over at MiniWarGaming.com to the winner of our Necron concept art competition. The competition closes at the end of November and we've already had loads of cool entries. Speaking of Necrons, of course if you couldn't contain yourself and you splashed out on a brand new Necron army, then check out these new ancient desert bases from Voodoo Works. But they're not the only sculpted bases out there. MicroArt Studios also have these versions, so you really are spoilt for choice. Of course, these bases aren't just for Necrons. They can be used for any desert-themed fantasy or even an ancient army. They would also be especially cool with some modern-day soldiers in desert pattern camo. Hey, the only limit is your imagination. Armored battle suits are the mainstay of many sci-fi battle games. While these models made by Xandris for miniatures may not be aimed at any specific game, they are nevertheless a mean looking set of automated battle trouser. If you don't mind using miniatures from other companies in your games, then I'm sure you'll find a use for these. However, the best fun you can have is to make up some rules for them yourself and add them to your favorite sci-fi skirmish game. Just think of it as something to surprise your friends. Every month, Beast of War holds a painting competition for budding amateur artists to show off their stuff. Last month, well, it was no exception. The theme of the competition was green skins, meaning, of course, anything that has a green skin. So orcs, dragons, aliens, crocodiles. If you could paint it green, then you could put it into the competition. This month's winner was Brush Guy with his Malifaux Gremlin. He wins a six month subscription to Beast of War Backstage and a $50 voucher from Secret Weapon Miniatures. The honorable mention this month went to Nanabeki's Gatorman Snapjaw. Other than that, here's another couple of entries that we just had to show you. And finally, thanks to all who entered and we're hoping that you will try again in the next competition, which is running now. Dungeon crawling fantasy fans rejoice. Fractured Dimensions are a newcomer to the miniature scene and their first set of greens is something that's likely to make old school Dungeons and Dragons fans shout for joy. For the uninitiated out there, Lemurs are annoying little blob-like demons that have an annoying habit of regenerating their wounds. On the other hand, chest mimics are monsters that look like every adventurer's prize, the treasure chest. Covered with a nasty glue, getting stuck to one of these monsters has ended more than one warrior's career. Meanwhile, Jublex is the infernal master of oozes, slimes, and other slithery, sticky things that hang around swamps. Just think of him as the Lord of Evil Jelly. We're great lovers of pirate games here at Beasts of War. In fact, anything that allows us to throw on a costume and throw a few dice around. However, despite having the body of a Greek god, I do have to draw the line at Amazons. Check out these new jungle fighting ladies from Freebooter Miniatures. But that's not all they do. We mentioned pirates and that's something Freebooters do very well. Freebooters Fate is a pirate skirmish game that uses the excellent range of miniatures that Freebooter have to offer. So take a look and see if any catch your eye, me hearty.
If you're a player of heavy gear blitz, then you'll know that it can be a bit tricky sometimes to get some terrain that fits with the whole look and feel of the heavy gear universe. Short of making it yourself, well, you were a bit stuck. At least you were until now. The guys at DreamPod9 have been coming up with some cool new terrain models scaled to fit the epic scale and style of heavy gear. The Outpost will be the first model to be released, but you can expect the others to be out in stores very soon. We've really been getting into Heavy Gear Blitz recently, and we'll be putting up a How to Play Heavy Gear video very soon. So if this game of battling cybernetic suits has piqued your interest, then you might want to be checking out the Beast of War website on a regular basis. The Pan Oceana players have been waiting for it for a long time now, and now you finally got it. Here are the first images of the new tag model for Infinity, the Drago. Check out the concept art for this sensational model and then compare it to the 3D sculpt. Finally, here's the version that's been fully assembled, primed and painted by that maestro of the brush, Ankel Heraldez. The Drago is a powerful support model armed with the awesome Hyper Rapid Magnetic Cannon, possibly the most lethal weapon in the game. Combine this with a unit of knights or fusiliers, the Drago could be potentially unstoppable. Well, unless you have an equally big fighting robot on the other side of the table. That's right guys, Empire are invading a hobby store near you with their brand new multi-post stormtroopers. Cast in fantastic detail, these 30mm masterpieces are the work of Knight Models, who are probably better known for their superhero sculpts and heroic busts. But did you know that they also have a big range of Star Wars models? We'll have a look at some of these. We've already had Star Wars in this episode, but how about some Star Trek? Mongoose Publishing have just released the first images for their new miniatures for the use in the Call to Arms Starfleet game. Call to Arms is a game of space battles involving starships of various sizes, classes and alignment, battling across the stars using the usual dice and measurements to determine the outcome of ranged fire and of course boarding actions. The system is simple enough to easily pick up, yet deep enough to be a fun way to simulate titanic battles between your favourite Star Trek races and factions. Have you always wanted your Klingons to face off against the Federation somewhere around Uranus? Then now, you can make it so. Have you ever wondered about the Victorian Age sci-fi game Dystopian Wars? Well, it's a game where elegant ships of steam and steel take to the air, sea and land in titanic battles that range from Antarctica to the deserts of the Middle East, to determine the fate of a world in the grip of an alternative history. Interested? Well, Beast of War have been running a week of how to play dystopian wars. There are also tutorials, unboxing videos, prize giveaways, and a huge special offer, as well as the usual Beast of War fun, and it's all available now over at the Beast of War website. Well, that's it for another On The Table, and we'd like to thank you for watching. If you're a viewer and you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us at ask at beastsofwar.com, or if you have something cool that you've seen that you want us to feature on the show, then send it to news at beastsofwar.com. Of course, you can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and visit the Beast of War website. But until next time, you have been watching On The Table.